So do you want to grow what has to be one of the coolest looking fruits in the world? I'm talking about dragon fruit. And they're really easy to grow, but getting them to bloom and getting them pollinated is a bit tricky. But I'll show you how, coming up. If you get some good information out of this video, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell icon for notifications for future videos. And while you're there, you may as well give us a thumbs up. Now let's get started. First off, this video is about pollinating a blooming dragon fruit plant. If you're looking for a video on planting a dragon fruit, I'll put a link right up here above. So have you ever tried dragon fruit before? I haven't. Nope. Saw them in the store. They looked so cool. One of the coolest things I'd ever seen in the produce section. Um, but they're kind of expensive, like six to ten dollars for one piece of fruit. And what if it's gross? So I did what any good gardener would do. I went home and spent eleven dollars to get two cuttings in the mail, wait two years, hoping and praying that it would actually bloom, and then it finally did. I'm not the only one out there, right? So it's a cool looking plant, right? It's a cactus that's actually native to a wet jungle than a dry desert. But cooler than the plant is the bloom, and cooler than the bloom is the actual fruit. Unfortunately, this plant is what you'd call high maintenance in the pollination department. First of all, it only blooms at night, and only for one night. However, it's a glorious thing to see in the nighttime, when it's actually blooming. And coming up, I've got some video of last night, this one here. In the wild, it's pollinated by bats and huge moths. But we don't really have a lot of those hanging around my garden. So, unfortunately, it's up to me. The good thing is, a lot of times it will start blooming right at dusk. And it will stay blooming just until uh, a little after sunrise. We've got some overcast here this morning, so it's actually still blooming. It's about 8.30 in the morning right now. But once it's closed, it's too late. So that's the one hurdle you have to overcome is getting it pollinated at the right time and actually knowing when the flower is open. The second thing is that a lot of dragon fruit, maybe not a lot, but some are not self fertile, meaning they need a second plant blooming at the same time to be able to pollinate with. And unfortunately you don't know unless you know exactly where you got it and they can tell you, you don't know what you've got. So it's kind of like, you know, you're living on a hope and a prayer for a little while. So on blind faith, I planted these two here and um, it bloomed one time last year and I missed it. it. came out in the morning and it had already closed and it was too late. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I happened to wake up early and noticed that this one up here at the top was blooming and was actually to pollinate it. And it looks like it was a successful pollination because it looks like a fruit. The one that fell off last year actually just turn into this little bump and that was it. So the fact that that fruit's still on there, it's been a couple of weeks and it's actually getting bigger. I'm guessing it was, it was a success. The cool thing about this one is last night at dusk, it was starting to swell. So I knew that last night was going to be the night. So I kept an eye on it. So right here, I'm going to go through some pictures, um, leading up to it being fully opened. And this was within a matter of probably two hours. All right, now I'm going to switch to some video from last night of actually pollinating it. And the sound quality last night wasn't so great, so I'm just going to kind of overdub what we filmed to explain to you how we're going to pollinate this or how we did pollinate this uh, flower, hopefully successfully, last night. <laughs> All of these here are the anthers. Now they're the male part of the flower. They hold the pollen. This is the stigma, which is the female part. So you can take a, a small paintbrush or a ballpoint pen, and you're going to brush the anthers around and around and just get it filled up with pollen. And you can see right here, the pollen is starting to collect on the pen. So now all we have to do is take that pollen and transfer it to the stigma and you just want a dark colored pen so you can see the pollen collecting on it and that's it 
All you have to do now is wait. In a few days, you're gonna either see the um, flower fall off and nothing be there, or there's gonna be a fruit at the base, which is actually this part right here. This little piece right here is all you're looking for the fruit. The rest of this is gonna fall limp within the matter of hours and die. You wanna leave it on there though. Don't pull the flower off, it will fall off on its own. But once you see this start to fatten up, you're gonna know that you had a successful pollination. So I'm not sure exactly how long the fruit takes to ripen, but once that, that one up there that started a couple weeks ago, once that's ripe, I'm actually going to do a video where I'm going to harvest it and do a taste test. Like I said, I've never tried one before. And after two years, it better be good. I've heard some mixed reviews, so we'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you got something out of it. Again, if you did, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next video.